The wooded beardsman, I already got one. I was waiting for Clint, waiting, Clint, waiting, waiting. He's doing all his shots. I'm like, I gotta cast a line. Second cast, well, first cast really because second cast I didn't quite get in the hole. There you go. Just on my way up north, when I had the, uh, the good fortune to uh, get invited out by the wooded beardsman to do some trout fishing, one of his uh, secret holes. Very thankful he shared it with me. He's already got one in as you, as you can see. So that's what we're doing today. I'm gonna cook up some wild edibles, some fresh trout, and hopefully, hopefully I have something to add to the pot too, so. What I'm fishing with is uh, just a small jig with a one inch white grub. I caught a lot of brook trout on uh, little grubs like this and jigs last year. This is a different color than what I normally use. So I'm not sure how it'll work out, but there's fish in there, so should do okay. I didn't manage to get anything at the last spot. So now we move to his his real honey hole. So hopefully I have a little better luck. Wait, so who's talking? Well, it's your spread. <laughs> so what do you... Uh... Yeah, it is my spread today. <laughs> it is. <laughs> we we uh, caught one fish yeah. on the second cast. And I brought no food. <laughs> so this is all Chris. Uh, why don't you tell us what uh, what you got here? Yeah, so we got the one brookie we got today. Um, a couple splake we got from ice fishing. And uh, we have burdock root. So that's that big leafy plant mm -hmm. for the root. But uh, the upper portion of it we're not going to use because it's going to be too woody, so we're going to cut that part out. So we're just going to use the lower portion. So you can see how it tapers off. That would be the lower portion. Yeah. So that would be edible. It seems and, a lot more tender down there too. Yeah, and where it splits open here, closer to the leafy part, it's obviously using the energy for the leaf. So it's yeah, 
that's opening up. So we're gonna, I haven't tried that before, we're gonna try that now. <laughs> Me neither. Yeah, and there's some, uh, the smaller ones are a thistle, or um, yeah, thistle, thistle root. And uh, leeks, everybody's familiar with wild leeks. Yep. And um, nettle. So that's just the top of the nettle. So what we're gonna try to do is um, kind of steam everything using the, the uh, moisture from the fish. Yeah, well, is, now that maple syrup, is that your, your own maple syrup that you harvested and everything? Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I've got a video up uh, on my channel for uh, Clint's viewers. Um, I boiled for almost 20 days and got quite a bit. So, oh, wow. Yeah, I, there's a, I have a little bit of an update on there, so you'll see okay. piles of, uh, of maple sugar and syrup. Nice. I'll be sure to uh, throw a link in the description to uh, Chris's channel, The Wooded Beardsman. So you guys can check all that stuff out. For my subscribers that, that aren't familiar with uh, with your channel, why don't you talk a little bit about uh, what you do, what you're all about? Yeah, sure. Well, I uh, I started to look at how it was, if it, or what it was possible to live off the land. And so basically the channel is looking at wild edibles and putting meals together. I eventually am hoping to be able to live at least a week off the land or more, ideally. Um, without losing any weight. So we did a wilderness yeah. living challenge not too long ago, mm -hmm. uh, last year. And uh, the premise of the wilderness living challenge is to not lose any weight. So it's, I mean, it, it's not totally about weight. We get that we're probably gonna lose some weight, but the idea is to at least make it go at thriving in nature. Yes. And so if we're just gonna slowly starve to death, we're not really thriving. So our goal is to kind of, is to be able to put meals together in any location, any time of year but actually be successful doing that. So yeah. we have another one planned in August yeah. of this year, and we have another one uh, on the on the uh, channel already that you might want to go back and look at, and if that's your thing, if you're interested in that sort of stuff. But yeah. yeah. The thing I like about that is you really, I mean, you guys are really putting yourself through a lot of suffering to really find out for the average person where the rubber really meets the road and, and what works, what's worth foraging for, what's not. Can you really sustain yourself off of uh, fishing with just a, a line and a rod? Yeah, and we have to Stuff abide like, by the rules, right? E exactly. <laughs> so there's there's a lot of questions that a lot of things people just assume they can go out and do, but you guys are going out and, and proving what really works and disproving what what doesn't work. So yeah, that that's exactly the case. Like it's it's easy, and in theory, there's all these books that talk about all these wild edibles, <laughs> and there's abundance, and it's yeah. seasonal. But you know, I don't know if I could go a whole year. I mean, no. A lot of even these, if I had all the seasons lined up, it, yeah. it would be really tricky. And a lot of these things, um, the effort that you put in to harvesting them, and preparing them, you're actually burning more calories. You're getting maybe certain vitamins and things you don't, you wouldn't get from your meat or whatever. But um, that's where it, it, it's a lot tougher than I yeah, think people for sure people realize. Well, even uh, even the nettle, like we're not going to get a lot of calories out of the nettle. It took me about 15, 20 minutes to go grab them. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I'm not going to get those the, those calories back from that, but they do have nutrients that we need. Yes. And the burdock, you know, you have to dig down about three feet to get a burdock root. Yeah. <laughs> and if you're lucky, you don't break it off. So I did that a couple times. So. And and as big as this looks, there's yeah. only a small portion that's going to be edible in the end, right? Right. Yeah. So. Yeah, the best bang for the buck are the ones that we were collecting anyway, like the leeks and the syrup. We know that's that's worth it. Um, and you know, fish is kind of on the it's on the borderline depending if you're in a good spot or not. Like we yes. worked all day for one. one fish. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we probably you know we definitely didn't make out okay today. No. But you look at this and it looks okay. We got a bunch of stuff, and there, there's actually some more back there too. But. Um, you yeah, were to see all the time that went into yeah. to all of it. Right, like it took me a day a day to collect that and I had to keep it, you know, from going yeah. rotten so that it would be ready to eat with the rest of the stuff that we have today. Yeah. And that was from ice fishing. You know? There's no ice out here now. So. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Yeah. So let's put this together. Absolutely.
That looks good, man. <laughs> Is that enough? <laughs> a little more. Yeah, a little more. <laughs> Gotta kill that burdock. <laughs> So lemon balm, and I actually just picked it up from my backyard. It smells just like lemon. I can so smell it from here, actually. Yeah. So we're gonna just tear this up, and uh, we're gonna boil it for about five minutes, and then we'll let it steep, and it'll make either a lemon tea or. If we let it cool off, it'll just be a lemon drink. Sounds great. Kind of like lemonade, eh? Lemonade, yeah. That's maple sugar, so we're gonna add that in there too. That's uh, after you burn out your uh, maple syrup and get rid of all the moisture, you're left with a with a sugar. It looks like brown sugar, but it acts more like like a cane sugar at this point. So okay. Mix a bunch of that in there just to sweeten it up. Ooh. You know what we're doing. It's amateur hour. Yeah. <laughs> I get that coffee in me. It's my blood. So shortly after we got into the grub, my camera died. But the fish was great, the leeks were great, the maple syrup. I could have done without the burdock, and the thistle root, and the nettle, but it's often the case with wild edibles, they're not always the tastiest things. Um, but yeah, it was just good to get out there and meet Chris. Hope you guys enjoyed meeting him too. And check out the link in the description. You can keep up with uh, what he's doing in YouTube. As for me, I've got a big trip I'm planning. It's going to be out of province, it's going to be your biggest one I've done so far. And I'll be retracing some of the footsteps of a hero of mine and hopefully making it to the site of his death and just kind of paying my respects, a bit of a sort of like a pilgrimage kind of a, a journey. So I'm really excited for it. As soon as uh, things are cemented in and I've got the details worked out, I'll be sure to share that with you guys. So. Stay tuned and uh, have a good one. Thanks for watching.